How do you protect yourself against an invisible enemy? You're watching Beneath the Surface, presented by Rockwall. 85% of Australians live by the ocean, and it's a precious resource synonymous with the land down under. But it's under threat from something you can't really see. Because every day, plastic waste enters our ocean and breaks down into microscopic pieces. This ends up in the food chain, and ultimately, us. In Sydney alone, waste generation is outpacing population growth at a rate of six to one, and some of that trash inevitably ends up in the ocean. Scientists say the amount of plastic in our ocean could outweigh the number of fish by 2050. So I'm here to find out how Australia is quite literally putting the issue of plastic waste back on the map. One of the coolest things about SailGP is you get to see the best sailors racing the world's fastest boats. But as I visit the iconic cities on the SailGP circuit, I wonder what makes these places unique away from the race course. I've discovered people from all over the world striving for a better future, redefining social responsibility and driving technical innovation, redesigning how we think about sustainability. If you're interested in finding out what makes these places really tick, join me as we go beneath the surface. At this time, we're in one of the world's most iconic cities, Sydney, Australia. Sydney is one of the world's great cities, combining first-class culture with natural beauty. But like any major hotspot, it also has its fair share of challenges. So I've put my sustainability hat on to head out and about into the city and discover sustainable Sydney in 60 seconds. It's so green and peaceful here in the Royal Botanic Garden that you might forget you're still in the heart of the big city. But it's well worth taking a stroll through here to learn a bit more about the plants and wildlife that call it home. Why not take a hike in the Blue Mountains? This stunning landscape is just a short drive from Sydney city centre and you can learn a bit more about the conservation efforts in place to protect it. Support local business by coming to one of the city's many farmers markets. That does two things, cuts out the middleman and saves the distance the food has to travel so you therefore save emissions. And you can even visit a sustainably minded, plastic free grocery shop like this one, Village Whole Foods. The concept is simple, bring your own containers from home refill them with as much or as little as you like and pay. Simple. And these days Sydney plays host to the world's coolest sports events including SailGP combining world-class racing and industry-leading sustainability. 2023 marks the third time the league has visited New South Wales. When you think of Sydney you might think of the Harbour Bridge, the Opera House and of course the beaches. The beach represents a way of life for Aussies and is a central part of the national identity, so it's important that these natural resources are protected. Of all the threats facing the coastline of New South Wales, climate change is having a direct impact on sea level rise and also increasing the frequency of extreme weather events, having a devastating impact on communities along this region. But there's another threat, and you know it well, plastic. Now, New South Wales generates more than 800,000 tonnes of plastic waste every year. And of that, only 10% is recycled, which, to be fair, is in line with global rates. But nevertheless, the fact remains we face a global challenge. Over 8 million tonnes of plastic enter our oceans every year, and it only degrades into smaller and smaller fragments, or microplastics. So who's actually tracking this? Well, it turns out, sometimes, it's you and I. Microplastics, it's not just in the marine environment, it's it's in our fresh waters, it's in our soils, in our terrestrial landscapes, it's even in the air. So it's, it's insidious, it's a global issue, and it's something that everyone has a role to play in, in solving. So OSMAP, the Australian Microplastic Assessment Project, was launched in mid-2018 with the specific aim of gathering scientifically credible data on microplastics around Australian shorelines while drawing on the community and creating a citizen science program that not only helps collect that information but also develops awareness and understanding on the plastic pollution issue. When OSMAP started there was very little information on that small microplastic scale pollution. And so we wanted to understand 
where the hotspots of pollution were. What we do as a citizen science organisation is engage people by doing active sampling. We don't just get them to take a sample and send it to us. We actually get them to sieve and look for it and say, is that microplastics? Part of what we also are doing is getting people to think more about those single-use plastics. Until they've seen it, you know, a lot of people are unaware of, of those issues. We've trained over a thousand people, so we have you know, over 450 samples around Australia, and the method is an example of what can be done anywhere. With that in mind, I headed to Rose Bay to meet OSMAP's project coordinator, Alex Swanson, and see the process in action. What we're going to do is take the top surface of the sand and pop it through our sieve to see what microplastics we've got here. And our sieves have a five millimetre mesh and a one millimetre mesh, because um, that's the size category of plastics that we look at. And then we'll just repeat this for the whole quadrat. Well, I can see the sieves are really full, so what's the process now? How do we sort through this? So, as you can see, we've got a lot of organic debris in here, but we've also got some of these macro plastics, um, which is anything over five millimetres. But what we look at is actually this bottom sieve. And one of the common things we find all the time are these nurdles. They're resin pellets and they're a primary form of microplastic. Um, in here we've got some foam as well. And we've also got some just hard fragments. Okay, so once we've had a look at all the microplastics, what happens next? Where does it go? So we'll try and take out all the microplastics from the sample on site. Um, and then we'll take that back to our lab where the sample will get verified by OSMAP microplastic researchers um, and then we'll be able to do some quality assurance and categorise it by size, shape, colour and type. And what does that tell you when you can see the colours and the size of the plastic? That information, um, it just gives us a bit more of an idea of the potential sources um, of where these microplastics may have come from. It's impossible to solve a problem you can't see and that's what OSMAP is all about. It's making the microplastic issue um, a visible problem. You never quite get used to how much microplastic that you find. Um, a lot of people kind of have this light bulb moment where, where they can actually help and contribute to making a difference in the environment. This is a typical sample that comes in. You can see some things look obvious. Under here at the moment we've got uh, some resin pellets and if we're getting a lot of these, which we do at this particular site, it tells us there's some plastic production. We can kind of do a bit of detective work and uh, see what industries are around in that area. With that knowledge you can take action? Uh, most definitely. Um, part of what we're trying to achieve with OSMAP is understanding how big the problem is. The information we, we gather here, we provide to local authorities uh, to help them manage the, pro the processes and implement some you know, good policies that are going to obviously reduce how much goes into the environment in the first place. So you have citizens all over Australia providing these samples to be monitored? Yeah, most definitely. We, we couldn't do it without the help of the people. So all information that we've collected uh, since 2018 uh, goes into that database. Uh, the data gets uploaded onto the map and then it's visible for anyone to see and use as well. The whole issue about impacts to humans is, is a valid one. We're eating about five to eight grams of microplastic every week, which is about a credit card size. And we know some of those chemicals are harmful carcinogens, they're endocrine disruptors, so they affect the hormone systems. And so these are all issues of concern by us consuming these plastics. What's your kind of hope for where, where we could be with this in the next like 10, 20 years? What we need to do is, is stem the tide. Programs like OSMAP help drive the change and that's what I like to see. I'm buoyant for a positive future, but there's still a lot of work to do between now and then. When it comes to plastic though, there's no substitute for recycling or avoiding single-use plastics, and the government here is taking decisive action. 
For more information on the New South Wales Plastic Action Plan, check out the link below. And yes, it does include phasing out single-use plastics altogether. Now, did you know that over 60% of Sydney Harbour's shoreline has been replaced by seawalls? It's a great way to protect against storm surges or coastal erosion, but it turns out it's not so great for biodiversity. So I'm here to meet a bloke called Dave, who's doing something about it. So Sydney Harbour has changed over the last 200 years since Europeans arrived. One of the big changes has been the reduction in the, the coastal, the shoreline. This means uh, the fishery potential and the biodiversity have dropped. We have over here uh, put in small reef structures next to the Opera House in partnership with the Opera House, which has been a wonderful partnership. We've installed eight clusters of three small reefs, which are, we call them R2-D2s. They're about that size, if you like. And they're composed of a stainless steel rod on an environmentally friendly concrete base. They can produce one to 200 babies, uh, which many of which would normally die, but by rearing them in the aquarium and tagging them and releasing them onto what we call seahorse hotels, which are small artificial reefs, maybe halfway houses, these animals can prosper and we can bring back local populations. The arrival of Sail GP through Sydney is a really shot in the arm for the local conservation workers in the, in the marine environment and it really uh, puts a spotlight on some of our work that would not otherwise get noticed in the wider community and of course sailors are great conservationists and understand this uh, and so we're very very grateful. The iconic nature of Sydney Harbour is helping in our quest I suppose to to ask people around the world to consider doing a similar thing in their harbour. I do think Sydney Harbour has a very bright future. It's fascinating to see how local citizens are at the front line of science in New South Wales, connecting the dots between cause and effect and bringing much needed visibility to a problem that all too often is out of sight and out of mind. Next time on Beneath the Surface, we're off to one of the most southerly islands on the planet, New Zealand. This episode of Beneath the Surface was brought to you by Rockwell.